I got to, I got to, I got to fight my way through. The, actually, I don't have to, or maybe I do, or I have to defend my way. Um, this is super important information. It was actually uh, the whole remote was uh, inspired by something that uh, Courtney posted on our Facebook yesterday. Do check it out. Dinner television: a story of a woman, a runner in Seattle, who of course was out for a run. Worst case scenario, went to use the washroom. Uh, somebody attacked her in there, and she fought her way out based on, uh, well, very level-headed thinking, but also a self-defense course got me thinking. Do we know what to do? These two cats. This is Thor. This is Randy. This is KPC. That's where we are, self-defense course right now. This is your passion, is, is basically way, yeah. empowering people with the right, um, not just to fight, just or to, or to flee, but to assess the situation that is key for you. Correct. Yeah, that's the biggest thing is knowing what you're getting into. You wouldn't, I always use the uh, analogy of a fire. I could imagine the first time a fire happened, there was eight liquids. You didn't know that water worked. You don't want to try oil first. Right. Right? Yeah, so you yeah, want yeah. to know what fire is and then know the solution. That's the same thing here. Right. You need to know what kind of violence we're facing what the best course of action is, and that's our job. That's what we do. Gotcha. Okay, so you're going to empower us with a lot of information and some moves, and mm. what's the first one we're doing right now? All right, so uh, we'll talk about off-camera. To me, escape is paid a lot of lip service, but nobody actually runs away from a bad situation. Right. And as a civilian, if you're not duty-bound to be there, don't be there. Right. Right? Not always an option. That girl in the story didn't have that option. Hopefully, you do. And she was a runner. She probably could have got away pretty right. far. So we're going to work. Thor is going to be our uh, goon here. Our bad guy. Our bad guy. Now, what we work off of is most predators, when we're talking asocial or predatory violence, they're going to use cultural cues to get closer to you than you normally allow. Right. Right? So if I don't know you, like we just met, we're, we're all buddy now, so we're yeah, high yeah, energy. Yeah, 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 yeah. But in this situation, if I didn't know you, there's really no reason for me to be inside you should not be inside of my gap. Right. Right? So if I need to know where 7-Eleven is, I don't need to be like, hey, we're 7-Eleven. Like, that's weird. Right? That, right? That is weird. Right? That's so, weird. <laughs> so we need to understand what's normal to understand what's abnormal. Right. So if I don't know you, I shouldn't be able to touch you. If we've just met, I will be closer. If we were more intimate, we would be even closer than that. Gotcha. Right? And so reading that body language is important. We're going to assume that we didn't have this knowledge, and Thor is going to get to you. He's going to come close as he can. Now. In this distance, this is where you're at, so that predator distance, this is the distance most fights happen. In. Right. So I love martial arts, I've been martial arts my whole life. This is where martial arts distance is. I can make any move work here. Right. Predators know that. They're not here to fight me for a title, they just want to win. Right. So the closer somebody is, the less time I have to react to a stimulus. The stimulus being a punch or a grab or a throw or whatever. Right. And we'll talk about the most common attacks that happen to women in a bit. So what I want you're going to do is you're going to have your hands in front of you. Mm hmm. And all I want you to do is, like you're doing old school CPR, right? you're just going to throw your hands forward behind your chin, and you're going to ideally hit him in between the shoulder and the neck. Right. What this does is very simple. It doesn't matter what he does, because at this range, I can't say on a right punch you can block, and on a left punch, and you, don't, you can't read close. it. Right. So we have to do what's called counter ambush. As he comes to hit me, I'm just going to stop that from happening Whoa. and create some distance. Okay. okay. So it doesn't matter. Just play with me, whatever you want to do. It doesn't matter what he does, this stimulus is always going to be the same. He can right. tackle or punch or kick. I don't have time to read this. Gotcha. So it's really easy. Now what I want especially... I don't think I've ever actually done that to somebody. It's going to be cool. <laughs> He's super pain resistant. That's why he works out so much. Okay. <laughs> so you want to make sure that when you're doing it, you're coming over 90 degrees. Okay. We're the only bipeds that can lock our knees out. Right. The same thing happens in our arms. So you want to use your bone structure, not your muscle structure. Okay. This is why it works for smaller people. Gotcha. Right, because it's easy for me, 6'1", 260, what's up? And then that's easy. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Right? But if you're not me, it's not going to be as easy. So, so just... He's going to really slowly, way slower than did to me. Okay. He's going to throw a punch. All you can do is just step forward and jam that shoulder. Exactly. One more time, Thor. Get Come him. on. Bang. Oh, okay. So there you go. We want to make sure the spine doesn't turn. Right. Because if the spine doesn't turn, you throw it as hard as you want. If you can't turn a spine, you can't generate force. Okay, we gotta take a break. This is um, this is self defense. This is uh, very important information. Good discussion point. Uh, we'll be back. M lots more that we're gonna be taking you through. That was one, and there's many, many, many more coming your way. So stick with us. Lots going on here on DT. Thank you so much, guys. No problem.